I would have destroyed myself for this woman. Gladly. I would have eaten garbage. I would have cut my wrists open. Under the right circumstances. I mean, if she was like, hey, Phil, why don't you cut your wrists open? Come on. But if seriously, we clicked. We connected on so many levels. We talked about God for like six hours one time. I don't know what good it did, but that intensity. And the first time we went to bed together, I didn't even touch her. You know what I mean? I didn't want to. So, after a couple of weeks, I laid it out on the table. Everything I wanted to tell her. You know what she says to me? <laughs> she says, no one should ever need another person that badly. Can you believe that? I lay my heart out on the table and you give me Dr. Joyce fucking brothers? You need. You need. I'm saying I love you. Is that so wrong? Is that not allowed anymore? And so what if I needed her? Okay, so sue me. I needed her. I don't want to be by myself. When I'm by myself, I feel like I'm going out of my mind. I do. <laughs> I feel like I'm not going to make it through the next 10 seconds. But I do. Somehow, I make it through the next 10 seconds. But they just keep coming. All these seconds floating by. And I'm sitting here waiting for something to happen. Car wreck. Nuclear explosion. I mean, that's terrible. But, you know, something that would convince me that I'm really here. That I'm alive. So I look in the mirror and I, I don't think that's really me. It's like my body is the size of the Statue of Liberty and I'm deep down inside one of these gigantic hairy legs and I'm scraping around inside my own foot like some tiny fetus. And I don't know what I'm doing or where I'm going and I wish I'd never been born. You know, not only that, my hair is starting to fall out. <laughs> and that really sucks.